time. Here I have a very sexy looking set of headphones. They're made by Avatone. They use planar magnetic technology and they're black. They're the literally named Avatone planar black headphones. For what I do in this channel, it's really important for me to be able to monitor what I'm doing precisely. And this can actually be really difficult when I'm comparing synths. For example, my nice Neumann monitors are not positioned in the ideal location. The synths are either to the left or the right of me normally. They're never in between my monitors. There just isn't space there in front of my computer monitor and on the desk. So I'm always keeping my eye out for ideas to make things a bit more efficient in here. And I've come across these which I'm given a bit of a test drive, I've been giving them a test drive over the past couple of weeks and they use tr technology that's traditionally been way out of my price range but these have been brought down really into the well worth giving it a look category so while I'm testing them out I thought I'd stick this video together as I said they're made by Avatone who are probably most famous for the mix cubes which are these little speakers you use in the studio to check your mix against consumer products does your mix sound good on the radio in your grandmother's kitchen? That's essentially what they're for, which is an essential part of any professional studio. But they also have a range of microphones and a couple of other monitors and amps. And as you can see here, they make these in a nice fetching red as well. So coming from Avatone, they've been designed and built from the ground up from a professional studio monitoring perspective. I've said they've used planar magnetic technology. What exactly is that? Well, there are two types of headphones really. There are planar and there are dynamic. Most, if not all that most people have ever used will be the dynamic. They're much cheaper than the planar. These can be really, really expensive and they can actually go into the thousands. Well, not these in particular, but planars can go into the thousand of dollars. Uh, real audio file quality stuff. Um, and that's because they're well known for having a really precise sound. So you can spend an absolute fortune on these. So I know these aren't cheap at £400, $400, but compared to some other using the same technologies, these are bargains. <laughs> So they're coming from a different place than your standard headphones and the benefits are really the enhanced sound. The negatives are definitely the price of any planar, but that's pretty much on par for anything in the studio game, isn't it? But let's start off by taking a look at what I'm using at the moment. I have these Bayer Dynamic DT880 Pros and I describe these pretty much as an industry standard set of headphones. You'll find them all over the place. They're really good value at around 150 to 180 pound, but they do overemphasize the treble a bit, which can get a bit tiring if you're using them for hours on end. And there's a tendency to overcompensate on sibilance in my voice. For me, for example, when I'm editing one of these videos and it can take me hours and hours, so bit by bit, I can eventually make things a little bit duller than it needs to be. And I've also got these. And these are what I'd now consider to be vintage, the Sony MDR7509s. And I've had them for about 20 years and they were £230 at the time. So pretty expensive. They're a closed back design, so you don't get much spillage from them, which means I use them for recording. They do, however, have a much greater bass response than I'd need. So I don't really trust these for mixing. They're a little bit too bass heavy. And then for convenience, I have these. Uh, these are great for when I'm editing the videos because they're the noise cancelling sort of standard from Bose, which means I can concentrate on editing when there's chaos all around me. But I know they're not ideal, they're not perfectly flat, and I prefer not to use them for this if I can. But as I say, they are convenient. And it doesn't really matter what I try, though, I still get comments from people um, who are hearing something completely different when I'm listening to those sort of finer points of a synth and that's because there can be slight differences in tone between two synths for example um, and these differences can be reduced by whatever I'm listening through or amplified by someone else's system so the differences can be massively exaggerated and I get comments from people who basically think I'm either stupid or deaf or a bit of both when in reality it's impossible to match different listening scenarios and it's more likely it's because their system is exaggerating things. But I don't like to tell them that in the comments. So the flatter I can get mine, the better. And I'm constantly on the lookout for an ideal solution. So um, let's take a look at these, shall we? They come in this rather attractive box, which includes two cables and this nice sort of 
heavy canvas carry bag. And looking at them, they ooze quality. They look and feel like a high-end bit of kit. And looking at them next to the Bayer Dynamic, they're much bigger, they're a bit heavier, but they're actually really comfortable. If you take a look at how much abuse my others have got over the years, you'll notice I've got a little knock on the Bayers here. And I can't help but wonder what these will look like in 10 years time if the paint will chip. It wouldn't put me off buying them, but it definitely means that I'd keep them in the heavy canvas bag. The cable can plug into either the left or the right ear and the second cable that's in the box can go in both ears, although I've no idea why you'd want to do this. I think it's more balanced. I did try it with both thinking it might give a bit more volume or something, but if it does, it's not really noticeable to me. And if there is a difference, it's not a dramatic one. So maybe that's just an audio file thing. My favourite album for reference is Late Night Presents Scene Delete by Sasha. It's a gloriously well produced electronic album. It's got all sorts of little details that I love. It's got some really deep basses and sort of really delicate high end little sounds. So it's a great way to listen to an all round performance. And I'm showing this on Spotify so you can see what it is if you want to check it out for yourself. But I've been listening to Lossless Audio <laughs> Files, just FYI. The first thing I tried was plugging them directly into the MacBook Pro, thinking that I might get a low level. Planers are renowned for needing just that extra little bit of juice to get them going, but nothing of the kind really. Turning the volume to the maximum was uncomfortably loud, so they're definitely giving out enough oomph. Um, well, they're similar, I suppose, to the 880s, which take a lot of power as well. And when I first got the 880s, I noticed that I was turning things up more than I, than I used to with other headphones. and I was a bit unimpressed by them until I realised, actually, that I've never needed anything else. I might have to turn things up a little bit more, but I've never needed an extra amplifier to pump things up. Comparing them both with the Sony's, there is less volume. So if you like listening really loud, you might need another interface or amplifier, but I wouldn't suggest listening at those volumes anyway, because you will become <laughs> deaf. So I've listened to these through my UAD in the studio and my Focusrite Scarlet third gen as well. And you know, after a while, what I noticed was that these were sort of, um, how does this describe it, sort of quite unremarkable and I mean that in a really good way in that nothing was jumping out or nothing sounded wrong or significantly different than it does through my large monitors uh, which at three and a half thousand pound you know I expect to be getting pretty precise sounds from them so I'm not saying these sound exactly the same but they sound so sort of the sound of the tracks is familiar it's got the same feel uh, and they're really sort of comfortable to wear so everything just felt right and I wasn't sort of listening to them in the end, I was just listening to the music. All those little details were there on those electronic tracks, lovely and clear with great separation and a really natural sound if you can say that about, na about electronic music. But nothing sound forced is what I mean, nothing sounded like I'd had to pump up an EQ on a desk for example to get certain frequencies to stand out. So. You know, sometimes you'll hear something that sounds like it's mixed to get a flat response and it sounds unnatural, but not with these, it just all sounded sort of smooth. So the next up, um, I did an AB with the 880s. So I put the 880s on and found the Bayer Dynamics instantly to be lacking something that I'd that I'd actually not noticed before. They just lacked the overall weight and the tone of these. And to be honest, uh, these just sounded a little bit rubbish which I was a bit sad about because I've had them for a few years now um, so yeah uh, you know I don't know why but I wasn't expecting the difference to be that stark normally as prices go up doubling the price doesn't double the performance but here the difference is really obvious I'm not saying these are twice as good as these but there's a definite definite difference it wasn't as subtle as i thought it was going to be and i definitely didn't expect the bass on the planars to be as impressive and uh and neutral as it is but that's because i've read about planars lacking bass so i was expecting not to have it and these don't lack it um it's just a flat unenhanced response which is what i'm much happier with and anyone that's mixing music or in music production should be happy with this so enhanced bass is a definite no-no for me anyway uh, and these were uh, plenty in the low end so then i went to another favorite few tracks of mine i was a bit of an echo and the bunny men super fan in the day <laughs> so um i put killing moon on and as soon as i listened to it it just sounded really dull 
and flat and following on from the Sasha album which is a much more modern production got much more sort of 3D and depth the, the Echo and the Bunnymen sounded like it was from the 80s it sounded like what you'd expect it didn't sound as nice as a modern production and the difference was the same sort of difference again in the studio on the big speakers but the Sony's here were much more flattering to the track uh, the difference between um, the Echo and the Bunnymen and the Sasha track wasn't as stark on the Sony's so the planars I think are definitely giving me a much more accurate view of the overall tone and the overall sound of a track so um, just going from one to the other there was really really impressed by these when I listen to Echo and the Bunnymen through the studio monitors for example all the productions to be honest sound a little bit rubbish <laughs> still you gotta love those early 80 albums and and I'm loving these um, with each little test um, I give them. So then I went further back in time but kept with the Liverpool band's theme and I played some Beatles and these were great. I could hear the felt hitting the kick drum and the damp snare was all there right in your face and I could differentiate between the kick and the toms when they were playing together in Come Together. Maybe they were uh, coming together in come together all boiled down i thought they got really amazing clarity through some of those older tracks you can really hear the tape noise you can hear little studio hums here and there it's all very impressive and it actually gives you a sense of time like you like you're back in the 60s the recordings aren't perfect and when you put these on it sort of feels like you're in the studio with them there's a little hum on little brown shoe as it starts and you can hear the sound of the room when they sort of talk in sections and all those sort of intricacies of the plucked guitar in blackbird and julia come through in this um and you know there's more tape hiss here and there but it becomes a much more submersive experience you really sort of do feel like you're sitting in the room with them and that sounds weird but um it just felt more 3d next up i put some synths through them and one thing that's really important for me is to hear the quality of different synth engines different filter types and they were really good at this as well um it's something that a lot of things can't cope with so tune in a filter sweep so it's basically just a sine wave sweeping down through the through the frequencies uh, um, as you got down to 30 hertz it was still it sort of dropped off after 30 it does say 30 hertz in in the specs for these but it dropped off a bit after 30 but it was still definitely there um, and on these on the Bayer Dynamics it definitely wasn't and on the Sony's these just started buzzing at me so maybe it's the rage I don't know but of these three I've got here yes I'd expect these to be better they are almost twice the price but um, they were really good I could really get those sort of those subs down at about 30 hertz so um, I wasn't expecting that at all so I thought I'd do one final test and as monitoring is such an essential part of the studio it's important to get your room response as flat as possible which I do using this Sonoworks Reference 4 software and if you don't know what it is watch my video I'll link it in the description it's great essentially it measures the response of a room and then compensates for inaccuracies in your system by changing the output frequencies of your system so here we can see the frequency response and it basically plays an inverse of that so you get a flat response when you're hearing it back through your monitors but it's also got response calibration curves for a lot of common headphones you can see sort of a massive list here and you can even send your own headphones in to have them calibrated for their own perfectly unique response and they've got the calibration curve for the 880 so i thought it'd be interesting to try to compare the flattened response of these to the natural response of these and i don't think it's going to sound the same but i wondered whether it would bring the 880s more in line with these and what i found was no <laughs> it brings up the bass in these that's lacking and it drops down the treble in them but they sound a little bit more muffled compared to these these still sound better so with these going through a couple of hundred pounds worth of software um, still not as good as them so what are my final thoughts on these well most high-end planar headphones 
prices are in the stratosphere. And as I said in the intro, it's not something I've actually looked into before. Just because there's something, there's always something more important to spend my money on in the studio. At well over a thousand pound, two thousand, five thousand pound for some, there's plenty of great synths, outboard gear, effects, and mics that you're much better to spend your cash on. Which is why I've not seen anyone going into the audio file route with mixing and monitoring headphones. But these actually aren't out of the question at £400. In fact, there's a, there's a reasonable argument for getting them because accurate monitoring is essential and you could potentially see these as an investment because they may be able to save you a small fortune on some decent monitors. You know, if you're in a small room and you, you can't play loud, but you need excellent monitoring, these, you know, I'd highly recommend these. Or if you'd like much more precise monitoring than your speakers will allow, maybe these can be worth uh, a look as a sort of a second opinion almost, uh, because they are so nice and sort of so precise. So yeah, I'm really interested that, I'm really amazed that there's actually a logical argument for spending that much money on a pair of headphones. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, maybe think about subscribing or maybe, maybe take a look at my Patreon page as well. It all helps to support the channel. Um, so, I hope somebody in some way enjoyed that, as I say, and I'll see you next time.